this session, uh, the theme is on East Asia people's responses to nuclear and war threats. And I think it's a very important and timely uh, topic. Uh, we uh, have originally, we have six speakers uh, on this panel, but uh, due to some uh, uh, contingent uh, uh, event, uh, Professor Wang, um, the plane uh, haven't arrived yet, so um, he won't be able to uh, speak on that panel, but uh, he will join us in the afternoon session. And uh, Professor uh, Lee Jung uh, uh, she will speak in other panel and uh, in replace uh, 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 the panelist uh, position uh, is Professor Lee Bung Yong. Uh, also from Korea. Now we have two speakers from Japan, two from Korea, and one from mainland China. Um, since we only have a one and a half uh, hour for this panel, so uh, may I suggest each speaker speak uh, uh, for uh, 15 minutes uh, at the very beginning, and then uh, we have our uh, kind of like uh, discussion uh, after the photo session and coffee break. All right, so uh, may I first introduce our first speaker, um, Professor Musa Kochi, and I don't think I need to um, introduce Professor Musa Kochi. I think uh, most of you uh, know him. Uh, he's now the professor by special appointment at the Center for Asia-Pacific Partnership, Osaka University of Economics and Law. He has also been involved in various uh, NGOs, uh, including uh, being the vice chairperson of international movement against all forms of discrimination and racism. So, uh, Professor Musa Kochi, please. So, I will uh, say the, uh, a few words for the introduction uh, on uh, three topics uh, uh, instead of a presentation by uh, a PowerPoint. Uh, first, uh, uh, before starting my three points, I would like to uh, 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 present my thanks to the organizers uh, uh, of having uh, allowed me to come. Uh, and uh, I would like to mention that it is very important for me to come to this South-South Forum because I'm not, unfortunately, from the south. Uh, Japan moved from the south to the north, and uh, I for formally apologize for that mistake. <laughs> and uh, I will start uh, to talk about the problem uh, which uh, started uh, uh, in Japan, because I'm very just nationalistic. Uh, the problem uh, starts with uh, uh, the fact that there was a Japanese uh, a great intellectual uh, who is uh, very much um, uh, appreciated by our great Prime Minister Abe Shinzo who likes the great uh, Yoshida Shoin. And Yoshida Shoin um, wanted to ride on the ship of Commodore Perry, and he was arrested and uh, penalized for uh, trying to leave Japan. Uh, and uh, he uh, wrote when he was in prison, a uh, prison note uh, which says the following. It says that when a country does not become stronger, it will be destroyed and become too weak. So Japan should become a strong world nation. To do so, Japan in the north should first colonize the Ainu land of now called Hokkaido, and then moved to, uh, to the north uh, 
and uh, to the uh, west it should uh, colonize uh, Korea and uh, build in uh, the east northeast part of China uh, a country uh, he called uh, Manchukuo and uh, in the south Japan should colonize uh, Ryukyu uh, Kingdom, annex Ryukyu Kingdom, and col colonize uh, Taiwan and the Philippines. And actually, uh, Japan did all what uh, Yoshida Shoin proposed, and uh, unfortunately, now uh, uh, Abe Shinzo wants to ride or maybe just follow another American warship and uh, I don't think that it is exactly a good idea. So my first point is uh, about the fact that Japan left the south and went to the north for a very bad reason and became more, uh, more harmful uh, colonizing uh, aggressor than Western uh, aggressors. And uh, now, as a repentant uh, country, Japan should be the first anti join the first ranks of anti colonial and anti neo colonial uh, uh, activities. Uh, not only here but uh, all around the world and uh, this is uh, the uh, theme which is uh, at the basis of uh, people's responses to nuclear and war threat, uh, th uh, threats and this is where I would like to come to the second point I want to make which is that the North did uh, a terrible bad thing. But uh, I prefer not to have a north-south, but to have a west and rest approach. Uh, I like the expression west versus rest. And uh, this is where the west is the north and the rest is, should be the south in the global south, on the global south side. And uh, to leave uh, the rest and become part of the west has been uh, the uh, objective of Japan. And Japan succeeded be in becoming one of the big uh, G7 countries from uh, the west. And Japan was the only one on the rest who did not rest but to try to uh, uh, approach uh, international politics and economics from the uh, Western uh, point of view. And uh, the, 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 the second point uh, about, is about the West or the North. I would like to tell you that the North did very good things because it was so bad. If the West was not so bad, and if it did not colonize uh, South Latin America, uh, all the wisdom from Latin America would not have come to Europe, as uh, Anibal Quijano of uh, Peru has been pointing out. But I will not go too much in, in that uh, direction. I would just like to tell you about the uh, nuclear and war threats come all from the West. And uh, the invention uh, of uh, uh, the Chinese invention, which was uh, used uh, more for, uh, how do you call it, for fire uh, crop, um, and the fire, uh, what is it, uh, for the celebration, 
firework, firework. Uh, but in uh, Europe, it was uh, just uh, focused on uh, uh, on uh, military power. And actually, uh, we are all in this situation because in Europe in the 17th century, they had the uh, Westphalian Treaty to end uh, also a very bad war uh, between uh, Catholics and Protestants. I am myself uh, Catholic and so I uh, know how bad it is to have been Catholic at that time uh, and even and now. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, the problem was that the king was the only one to decide what was the correct religion. And the not correct religion was just tolerated. And so that was tolerance. But uh, uh, the tolerance existed, but the king should be very powerful. So he was, uh, because of the uh, uh, Catholic and uh, Protestant uh, mutual terrorism, to eliminate all this terrorism, it was decided that the, all the power to kill, the legitimate violence, was to be monopolized by the king, which became uh, the state. And so the state was the only killer, the only, uh, only terrorist, uh, which was uh, actually uh, uh, legally uh, accepted. And uh, the uh, other problem was that all this kind of uh, military uh, killing power was to be balanced between different states in the civilized, civilized part of the world, but the uncivilized rest of the world, all the Catholics and the Protestants uh, competed in colonizing the non-civilized peoples and uh, this was the beginning of colonialism and uh, colonialism and nuclear and uh, war threat is now very closely related and we have to uh, look at the problem from that point of view and uh, the good thing about the West is that they were so bad and uh, uh, I'm, as a Roman Catholic I must tell you that I am proud of the fact that the Roman Church uh, killed so many people and burned so many people and uh, that was the beginning of the Reformation and so Reformation was supported by the Roman Catholic uh, uh, terrorism. And, uh, so, but uh, this is, uh, in that sense, the Reformation and uh, uh, all the Enlightenment came about because the kings, absolutist kings, were so violent and killing people. So in order to oppose it in Europe, you had a development of universalistic human rights, uh, freedom, and other uh, values. And we have, in that sense, to have a great admiration of not the, the West as such, but the minorities in the West who fought so courageously. And we have to follow their path and not the path of the Westphalian state. But uh, this is where I come to my ra last point. In uh, terms of uh, Westphalian states, all the European nations decided to not to uh, keep alive the Westphalian uh, message. They wanted to have Europe, and Europe had a tribunal for human rights, and so that all the 
things would have been uh, just uh, sentenced uh, there if uh, that uh, if the present Europe existed just uh, around the time of the Westphalian Treaty, and so we have to go uh, beyond the Westphalian Treaty, and uh, uh, the, this leads me to the third point, which is that we have to overcome uh, Westphalian state systems. The states should not remain uh, the legal killers. The states should become non-killing. To build non-killing states is what is very urgently needed now. And uh, for example, uh, China or the DPRK also are uh, agreeing to have denuclearization of the world. It is, uh, uh, the, this is where we need to build a world without uh, atomic bomb or atomic energy also, but also have a total and general disarmament. And so this is uh, now what is important is for the people to be for a non-killing state system and uh, actually the non-killing state system uh, will uh, be built uh, when uh, we will be able to develop in Asia uh, now, or, uh, a more pl pluralistic world order than the one which exists now under global um, uh, globalization and uh, we need there to uh, come back to all our uh, Asian and non-Asian traditions of uh, non-violence and of uh, having a world uh, based on the right of all the peoples to live in peace and this is uh, uh, what I would like to mention as uh, the target of this discussion. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. And I thank uh, the organizers, uh, particularly Tolkien Chi, for, how can I say, uh, actually selfless <laughs> effort to try to network people who have minds and spirits to defy the present order of things which is vicious, which proved vicious already to us. Um, I am supposed to talk about uh, uh, people's responses to nuclear and war threats. Uh, obviously uh, having the situation around the uh, Korean Peninsula in mind. And we have uh, uh, excellent uh, participants from, uh, from uh, Korea. And so I can't, I, I'm not uh, actually equipped to go into details of this uh, danger. Uh, so uh, I will focus on, on, on one or two points uh, which may be hopefully relevant. Uh, one is, of course, uh, the point is the conflict uh, between North and South in, 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 on the Korean Peninsula, uh, which is uh, uh, now uh, not just national issue, but an international issue and focus of uh, tension uh, from the point of view of uh, world peace or danger of nuclear uh, war, actual war. Uh, I think uh, this is very, very peculiar because the war started in 1950 and uh, the firing of uh, bombs and uh, uh, bombardment uh, was stopped in 53 
as a, <coughs> the form of uh, of uh, amnes, I mean uh, armistice agreement. And how many years? Sixty-four years already. <coughs> I was I joined the university in 1950 in April, and in June the war started. So <laughs> my my uh, school days was uh, was lived with the Korean War, with the occupation, American occupation army uh, arresting us and uh, putting us to military tribunal trials. Uh, so, so many years passed and I'm an old man now, no longer a student. Uh, still, it continues. The near belligerency continues to today. Why? I think uh, the, 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 the <coughs> in the post-war world, there are two spots which are so chronic uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, the, the spot of danger, spots of danger. That is Israel, Palestine, and Korea, North-South division and unrest. So I think uh, these two cases are very special. Other cases were settled more or less. Therefore, there should be a certain constant will at work to keep those situations so. The Israel-Palestine, the special relations between Israel and the United States, huge military and other aid dumped into that small country. It never was rushed, in spite of all the uh, Security Council resolutions and so on. Korea, I clearly perceive a very strong and, and persistent will on the part of Washington not to end it. The way to end it is very simple. Uh, peace treaty. It's unusual. How unusual and strange to any kind of international practice that armistice continues for 64 years, no peace treaty, while DPRK is a member of the United Nations and uh, has diplomatic relations with more than 100 countries, exchanging ambassadors and so on. Even so, it is regarded basically as an outcast, as some sort of untouchable. Uh, you, you should uh, sort of start your analysis from that. We are nowadays accustomed to the widespread uh, general logic that uh, North Korea is crazy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an outcast country. It is an exporter of terrorism, etc. once. But uh, uh, that, that bad country which cannot feed their own people are now <coughs> trying to have nuclear weapons. Totally unpredictable leader is there and all those exaggerated statements scattered throughout the world from the mouth of the government. So we have to deal with them as such a, a thing, as such a, an entity. But something is forgotten. Why this has happened? I think uh, uh, we need to get reminded that the military force that fought on the peninsula is not the United, is not the United States force at all. It was a United Nations force organized on the basis of Security Council decision. The mainstay was the United States force but uh, soldiers were recruited from all over the world 
So many, for instance, Turkish soldiers died on the front, Filipinos. So it's uh, the United Nations that should take the responsibility for that. The United Nations as such didn't sign armistice agreement because it was the, uh, properly constituted United Nations forces uh, based on, on the United Nations Charter. Therefore, it was the commander of the American forces and the North Korean representative and Republic of Korea didn't sign. <laughs> it's a very, very strange uh, kind of uh, ceasefire. What to do with this? The United Nations should be held responsible for this consequence. I think there should be a move to do that. And of course, the Security Council has the United Nations, United States as a, as a most important member. Therefore, it would be impossible for us to expect the, the, the Security Council to adopt such a resolution. But we should go to the General Assembly. There should be a very vast move at the General Assembly level. That's what I, 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 I think is, isn't impossible. I take the case of China. In spite of American refusal uh, for many, many years, the General, General Assembly resolutions worked finally forcing the United States to change its policy. I think uh, uh, this kind of pressure should be built up in order to change the context in which Korean issue is seen. Otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of uh, on, on the base of wrong assumptions that things are going on. The sanctions I, I, I just mentioned. The, the, the North Korea is a bad guy. So how to chastise this bad guy? What will be most effective in order to, in order to force it to, to change its mind? So this basic assumption is, is wrong. And I am not defending uh, the way the, the, the North Korean government is uh, managing the country, no. Singling it out and build a certain sort of effigy of the enemy would be totally unproductive and a bit, little bit about Japan. Uh, well, as uh, Mr. Sensei said, uh, Modern Japan is, has been such a thing. And, and, and now uh, our government, uh, Abe, uh, Abe government, is totally, how can I say, uh, occupied by a certain group of people. Uh, the group of people are right, rightists, ultra. <laughs> Uh, consisting of people who, who openly say among themselves it's a public, public, uh, semi-public uh, kind of uh, uh, gathering saying that uh, uh, the, the worst thing after, after defeat uh, in the post-war Japan was that we recognize people's sovereignty that kind of thing is openly said. So they want to revive the continuity uh, of the Japanese states from the imperial past, from the past where, where <coughs> they, they made war and, 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 and brought death to so many people in, in, in the neighborhood, as well as the Japanese themselves. They want to glorify this past. And uh, one of the, well, the, the major uh, rightists uh, mouthpiece 
న్యూస్ పేపర్ సంఖ్య సిద్ధు నేమ్ టు టు దిస్ క్యాంపెయిన్ కోవిడ్ హిస్టరీ వో విక్ సెన్ ఇట్స్ ఇట్స్ అ వెరీ 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 నేమ్ ఇట్స్ కో ఇట్స్ కోసిడర్ వో అండ్ వో ఇస్ అబౌట్ హిస్టరీ ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ హిస్టరీ so there was no such thing as nanjin masaka the comfort women were prostitutes they were paid very very high etc etc so they, they want to remake history in their own image which helps to glorify japan's past and and, and continuity from imperial japan to post war japan <coughs> so the constitution should go and now they are there for already nearly five years uh, what they have done is to, cause, to, to use public power state power all the public power as their private property is a sort of privatization that in a very different way of privatizing so they privatize try to privatize nhk which is the biggest uh, public broadcasting corporation by appointing very well known lightists who are talking always talking crazy things no to the to lead leadership like that so what happened they got corrupt extremely corrupt and using uh well you know it's a sort of nepotism uh and so it's being exposed now so they 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 are now they now find themselves in, in, on, on, on a shaky ground extremely shaky ground in the past uh, few months um people couldn't approve of it but uh the basic struggle against this orientation of glorifying the past isn't totally gone it's fairly well widespread uh, through meticulous efforts on the rightist part uh, go to uh, bookstores uh, in front of uh, uh, railway stations uh, in my point <laughs> full of books vilifying China uh, dealing with Korea as a how can I say defunct uh, people etc all those uh, incredible kind of racist books are there so these were accumulated in, in the past 15 years so there's a very dangerous kind of uh ideological how can i say uh, bias uh still still not really subscribed to but uh, accepted it's not a matter of uh, positively people positively promoting it but they passively accept it as a common sense kind of thing So this is the basis of the Japanese government's attitude toward uh, the Korea situation. And uh, the, the, this is a very irresponsible government. And so uh, they even uh, instigate America to go to war. No? The, 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 the sort of rhetoric is like that. They don't mean that. They, 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 are, they are afraid of war. But still they say that uh, this, this is 
North Korea is so bad and so dangerous. Uh, no option should be rejected. This kind of thing is being said. So uh, I am not proposing any final solution or de definite solution. But I think one way, it's my tentative proposal, to mobilize the General Assembly of the United Nations. Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. <coughs> Um, actually, I'm very uh, delighted uh, to be invited to this uh, fourth South South uh, Forum for Sustainability. Uh, since I belong to the first generation of ARENA, uh, I think I remember it has been already 35 years, uh, early 1980s, I joined the first group of uh, ARENA meeting like Murai Sang and Sri Chai. And I think Kinji was a young uh, scholar at the time, uh, Ed Tadem, and uh, still young, <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, uh, I missed many uh, fellow meetings and uh, South South forums uh, because of my involvement in uh, UNESCO work since uh, 2000. Uh, I think 2012, uh, when you organized the second uh, South South Forum in Chongqing, I sent my staff uh, instead of me <laughs> uh, to the uh, rural uh, problems. Uh, uh, so uh, I appreciate very much uh, uh, for this opportunity to be invited. Uh, it's my first time to be in uh, Ringnan University. Um, and thank you very much for all the organization and the invitations and hosting us. I myself have hosted uh, 20 years ago uh, in Sungshil University the ARENA meeting. Do, do you remember? Uh, 1997, Tadem was there and Mushakoji, you were also there and then which I have hosted. But as uh, uh, Mutosan has just said, we are continuing the same topic from that time, you know, about the uh, peace treaty problem in Korea and the solution of, of nuclear issues of North Korea. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, every time we met, uh, we discussed about the Korean issues uh, also, but still uh, in this uh, 21st century, uh, uh, 70 years after the Korean War, so still we have not solved the how to end the Korean War and the overcome the danger of nuclear wars uh, on uh, Korean Peninsula, uh, which might be also uh, escalated also in East Asia. Uh, so I would like to continue the talks uh, of which uh, uh, Muto-san has just raised. Uh, how to uh, make some alternative way of peacemaking uh, in uh, Korean Peninsula, also in uh, East Asian uh, uh, context. <coughs> uh, this year, 2017, will be remembered in the history of Korean politics as the year of candlelight citizens' revolution another important milestone of democratic development. In the weekend rallies of our five months uh, last winter, over 17 million people in accumulation from all ages, from elementary school children to serious uh, seniors over 80 years old, men and women, have participated in the demonstrations and shoutings for people's sovereignty, people's sovereignty and the liquidation of evil practices, corruptions and illegalities that have finally impeached the President Park and toppled down the ultra-conservative so-called Princess Republic regimes. In the history of Korean democracy, there have been some similar other revolutionary people's uprising in the past, 
like 1960 student revolutions and continued people's resistance against military dictatorships in 1970s and 1980s. But they failed all to achieve democratic changes because of the counterattacks like military coups in 1961 and Gwangju massacres in 1980s. The democratization in 1987, just 30 years ago, was the result of the negotiation between the people's power and the military concessions. So that's why it could only settle the democratic order like people's direct election of president, but could not bring much substantial changes in social economic systems. Now, through the victory of people's power and non-violent candlelight demonstrations, the democratic government of President Moon Jae-in has been just established, who has promised to launch profound reform in economic, judicial administrations and improve the security policy through dialogue with North Korea to solve the nuclear problems. The tasks of reform to liquidate the evil practices and reconstruct the just democratic reasonable social system which the candlelight demonstrators have long time claimed and also the new President Moon Jae-in has promised to realize are very tremendous and very difficult tasks. And the ruling party has no majority seats in parliament. In this regard, the democratic government of Moon Jae-in will need to be supported by the civil society and people's movement further and very seriously in order to ac accomplish some results of reform and change. Otherwise, his reform plan could fail or could be not much successful because there are still big conservative powers of big business, bureaucracies, press and mass media, military, and also all the senior people. The most urgent and serious reform task is to prevent the danger of military conflict and possible war on the Korean Peninsula, which has been accelerated by the North Korean de development of nuclear arms and missile technologies. And also, U.S.-Korean joint military exercises to decapitate Kim Jong-un's head and attack the nuclear facility in North Korea. U.S. President Donald Trump has warned already against Kim Jong-un's North Korea with many different tones of speeches and words. Sometimes he said he will talk with Kim Jong-un over the hamburg hamburger eating tables. But some other times he declared he will not continue the Obama's policy of strategic patience, but is ready to go into unilateral action to counter the North Korean nuclear and missile tests, which includes all kinds of options, not excluding preemptive attack into nuclear arms facility of North Korea. Last April, he ordered the aircraft carrier Carl Vinson approach near the Sea of Korean Peninsula with other strike groups 
the bombing aircraft B-1B and fighters F-15 have flown from Guam Island into Korean air to practice bombing Pyongyang and the nuclear facilities in North Korea. But regardless of sanctions and warnings from U.S. and United Nations, North Korea continued to develop the Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, ICBM, which can reach also American cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco and tested successfully medium and long-range missiles targeting over 13,000 kilometers. If U.S. President chooses once the preemptive military option as his unilateral action, the result will be horrible destruction of both South and North Korea. And might escalate military clash and war in Northeast Asia into which USA, China, and Japan could be dragged. Any first attack on North Korean land will automatically be responded by fire of 3,000 long-range artillery at the boundary line targeting South Korean cities which could kill some hundred thousand people in the flame in a few hours which cannot but burst into total war in Korean Peninsula. <clears throat> so we have been seriously worried about the talks of US parliamentarian and right-wing military advisors about the possible tactic of preemptive attack to solve nuclear arms and missiles in North Korea recently. That was the situation early April this year as Xi Jinping of China visited Trump in Florida to discuss the problem of North Korean nuclear and missile issues. So Korean civil society organizations, together with the religious groups for peace and justice, have decided to send a special delegation to USA to appeal to the American and Chinese summit meeting on Korean Peninsula. And Mr. Lee Buyong and I belonged to the six members of delegations of civil society organizations and Protestant and Catholic uh, One Buddhism representatives who were sent to the USA at the time. We appealed at White House and United Nations headquarters no military action like preemptive attack, no deployment of SAD, that terminal high altitude area defense which are going to be deployed now in Korean soil that will target also China. We have also urged North Korea to suspend the further development of nuclear and missiles and come into negotiation table for the security of even North Korean regime. As Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi suggested, negotiation of concerned countries toward the freezing of North Korean nuclear activities and the suspension of U.S.-South Korean joint military exercises is the right step to eliminate the danger of war and also to develop further process of peaceful system like peace agreement and mutual recognition of both sides. Fortunately, the first summit meeting of President Moon Jae-in of Republic of Korea with the U.S. President Donald Trump just a few days ago has been so far successful to bring about the principal agreement to utilize 
the both ways of sanctions and dialogue with North Korea. However, it would not be an easy job to bring North Korea to the dialogue table. For freezing nuclear tests and persuade the final denuclearization, unless enough trust is being built and firm security and identity of North Korea is guaranteed. In this respect also, I'm very sure dialogue among civil society, non-governmental organizations like cultural, academic, religious groups around Korean Peninsula must proceed first to build trust relationships before the political negotiations on the governmental level could start. We have observed clearly in Germany how much effective and influential the people-to-people -people meeting and dialogue was for the detente and trust building among the people of divided and hostile countries. However, between the people of South and North Korea, dialogue has been long time forbidden and suppressed and mistrust, misunderstandings, and distorted images are still highly promoted by the education, mass communications, even the churches and temples. It would take still long time to open dialogues of the people of both Koreas. So in this regard, I would like to suggest ARENA, together with the co-sponsoring CSOs in East Asia, maybe also Cultural Study Center of Lingnan University, to contribute to facilitate any ways of dialogue with people of North Korea for the peaceful community of East Asia. I hope this force South-South Forum on Sustainability will be the good opportunity to think of East Asian Conference of Common Security and Cooperation like CSCE in Europe to avoid military confrontation and nuclear new war and to build the peaceful community in East Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you, moderator. Uh, I, invi I was invited by this forum, but uh, I did not have to prepare the paper to uh, here. But uh, Professor Lee Jong Ho uh, uh, gave me the chance to express my views uh, on this topic. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to speak in front of you, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, <clears throat> anyhow, I f I'm feeling somewhat uh, uh, what kind of uh, something wrong <laughs> because uh, here uh, the North Korea is a very important player of international politics in East Asia, but uh, the North Korea is not represented this, in this month, in this uh, forum. And then, uh, if you can, uh, uh, please um, make some effort to call them here. Uh, so I think it will be very equal to them. Uh, I was glad to hear this, this session once subject was decided East Asia, people's responses to uh, nuclear and war threats. 
uh, <clears throat> I wonder what was your responses when uh, you you heard U.S. aircraft carriers Carl Vinson, Ronald Reagan, and Nimitz, uh, and fighters and bombers rushed to around Korean Peninsula in preparing for preemptive strikes against North Korea. Uh, many relatives overseas called their parents and sons and daughters to come out of South Korea immediately. Several times a day when the crisis came to climax. Uh, what was the response of South Korea at the time? Just don't worry about it. Can you understand it? Uh, it was quite really eerie silence. Eerie silence. Strange and chilling. Uh, South Koreans think they have been living in the big island surrounded by three seas and one DMZ demilitarized zone there is no way out from this, this island desperation It seems like that they were screaming with eerie silence. The North Korea and United States have been playing war games with taking South Koreans hostage. However, South Koreans began to show their own non-violent disobedience with a unprecedented scene of Truman Way. Uh, let me uh, enumerate several subjects in regard to North Korean nuclear crisis. Uh, I hope this will not be uh, repeated uh, because you already mentioned uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, I would like to know what is the general recognition of governments and uh, civil societies in South Asia uh, about North Korean nuclear crisis? Uh, most of intellectuals and civil society understand the reality of the crisis, but uh, the general public, do they understand this crisis are connected with their lives directly? If the, if the crisis will, uh, well, uh, expand it into the total war or, or something like that. In that sense, was restriction and blockade against North Korea effective to hold them back or rather to accelerate the nuclear capacity? The second, uh, what do you think about the agreement made by U.S. President Donald Trump and ROK President Moon Jae-in in their summit meeting to resolve the North Korean nuclear issue through diplomatic way, not by military force. 
They also agreed to organize a specialized strategy task force team to deal with North Korean nuclear issue. Can it be regarded as a flexible move than previous approaches? It was beyond my expectation that Mr. Trump supported the South Korean administration to play a main role to develop circumstances for the peaceful reunification in the Korean peninsula. peninsula. Is it just this, his diplomatic gesture or what he really intended? Mr. Muto, uh, would like to point out this gesture. I think so. The first, there are two precedents that had frustrated agreements leading to the eventual North Korean denuclearization, mainly due to the U.S. interruption. Uh, 19th September Agreement in 2005 and 13 February Agreement in 2007. Uh, it had been almost very successful, but it, it had been fiasco. The nuclearization, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula requires the transition from armistice to peace agreement, as Professor Muto pointed out. It also requires the deactivation of the United Nations Command. Since the U.S. military force can stay in Korea under the United Nations command, this process will lead to withdrawal of U.S. forces in South Korea. Would the U.S. military concede to the process? Fifth. The reason why Mr. Trump has shown somewhat flexible position and even supports Moon's administration with their diplomatic approaches to North Korea is because Moon gave positive responses to tri uh, Trump's economic gains. Mr. Trump is making use of the U.S. military force as a leverage in order to pursue American economic interest. Any developing countries or third world countries, uh, including this Southeast Asia, can be targeted by Mr. Trump at any time. However, there have scarcely been an efforts to raise up common voices against Mr. Trump's America First policy yet. Six, the Korean Peninsula is surrounded by four superpowers, US, China, Japan, and Russia. It seems like Korean Peninsula politically isolated by those countries from the rest of the world. Are these Southeast Asian countries, are those Southeastern countries able to stretch their hands to North and South Koreas to be these peaceful partners and regional neighborhood? Seventh, uh, this is the internal problem of South Korea. You might have heard or been interested in current Korean citizens' candlelight demonstration during the last winter. 
It was followed by impeachment and arrest of former President Park Geun-hye. I would like to raise a grave internal question in South Korea. There is a serious clavis between 80% candlelight supporters and less than 20% ultra-right conservatives. Candlelight citizens are mainly composed of young and under-middle class. Vested interest groups of less than 10% ultra-conservatives own means of production, including mass media and intellectual, intellectual networks. Leaders of those groups have backgrounds of American education. Even though the regime would change, the landscape of the South Korea would be still sticking to the past that had been mapped by the United States. This is the dilemma South Korea faces with. As same as the rest of Southeast Asian countries, still South Korean ruling class influenced by U.S. will not be changed. And we will have to figure out the way to resolve the social issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, uh, and uh, this uh, forum to invite me here. But sorry, I'm not uh, really an uh, expert on Northeast Asia, but uh, since Jianzhi suggests me to talk about this topic, so I somehow gather some information and uh, I present uh, some of my observation on this issue. Huh? Mm. Well, uh, you know, uh, recently there, uh, the situation in, in, in around uh, uh, Korean Peninsula is uh, pretty tense, as uh, everybody knows. And, uh, you know, people are worried that it could uh, be escalated into a real war. Uh, like the previous speaker talked about it that will be a very much a disaster for the countries in that region and perhaps even worse. But anyway, so far we have seen you know, several parties try to work something out. Perhaps in order to avoid that, uh, that kind of uh, consequences but uh, what comes to China is that, uh, and of course, uh, I would say that China always uh, saying, you know, it has uh, three principles on this issue. You know, every time if you ask uh, the government, and they will repeat this. The first one is uh, denuclearization of the uh, Korean Peninsula. The second is uh, the uh, uh, peace and uh, stability in the Korean Peninsula. And the third is uh, to settle all the issues through dialogue and the consultation. You know, that's I think people probably all know that's uh, the official position there. And it also said that, you know, this, the the one of the action is that uh, the end of last year, the UN passed a resolution to impose sanctions against uh, DPRK. Right? And China actually voted for it and actually has taken uh, action to implement that. The most obvious action is that uh, China decided to stop import coal from DPRK. And, uh, you know, I think maybe it's not a big deal, but uh, for DPRK, I think it is a big deal. Because, uh, you know, 
according to some some uh, information that uh, DPRK is a foreign foreign trade uh, mostly uh, down with China and uh, of those foreign trade or the DPRK uh, export coal export uh, it's very important it's uh, how much is that, 40% or something, or even more than that? So even though you know, people claim that uh, the uh, sanctions is uh, just uh, targeting you know, North Koreans uh, you know, testing nuclear test, nuclear and missile tests, uh, not uh, to affect the uh, uh, people's living, but uh, you know, you just think about it. I doubt that that's going to be the case. But nevertheless, UN, you know, passed that resolution, right? And, but uh, then, <coughs> the Chinese uh, official position also is that uh, they say uh, this issue, you know, we are not the one that directly involved. We are not the directly concerned party in this. Who are the directly involved party? One is the DPRK, another is the United States. Uh, <clears throat> but I am very much agree with uh, Muto said. Actually, uh, when we think deeper into this issue, I think uh, actually it's not even, you know, DPRK or the U.S. There's two parties. I think uh, the core issue is the United States. You know, one question is why the U.S. has to be involved in all this uh, development in Northeast Asia. I know that there, there is a, a treaty called the Mutual Defense Treaty, right? Between the US and uh, South Korea that was signed in 1954, 50, 53, uh, effected uh, in 54 perhaps. It's after the Korean War. Well, the uh, background is that uh, it, uh, that was the Cold War time. And they signed that treaty, you know, to say that in order uh, to face up the, you know, socialist camp, you know, at that time, Soviet uh, led, led socialist camp. But that Cold War, that kind of uh, framework, long collapsed after the collapse of Soviet Union. But, uh, you know, the consequences, there is, you know, this kind of is Cold War order still very much alive, not only actually in, in Northeast Asia, but also in, in, in Europe with the NATO expansion. What's the reason? And for all of this, U.S. is, the, is leading all this thing. You know, for me, I can think of only that the, the all this, uh, what is that, is that the U.S. very much want to keep it uh, world hegemony and uh, try to control the situation everywhere. You just think about, of course, you know, Lots of people are against, uh, you know, North uh, uh, DPRK to have nuclear weapons. But if you put yourself into their shoes, you think about, you know, they are worried about that uh, DPRK will have a nuclear capacity that can reach California, Los Angeles, but the U.S. nuclear weapon can reach everywhere. All these years, why nobody raised that question? Uh, shouldn't uh, other country be concerned about that? Or they should have to take what it is. They can be threatened, but they cannot re react to that. I don't 
to understand what kind of justification is that. And the whole world, the so-called community, it just uh, ignore that. Prete I don't know whether it's pretending or really they think that way. DPRK's action, I think, is very, very much is a response to the U.S. aggressive policies towards it. You think about, you know, DPRK is not very much a developed country, right? It can better use resources for, for improving their living standard, promote their development. They have, you know, much more, you know, better use of their resources. Why they do that? There is a big reason there. Another one is, I think, uh, of course, according to this mutual defense treaty, U.S. has, you know, has the right to station their land, sea, and air army in South Korea. And South Korea has to accept that. I also wonder, you know, South Korea, or also Japan, they all now become a developed country already, right? And they cannot defend themselves. Why do they need a U.S. military presence there? In the name of what? To defend the country? From what? It, it, you know, the whole thing, when I think about this, I think that there are a lot of issues uh, that are not uh, very much talked about publicly. But actually, it is all these things that uh, really, when you dig up those things, I think it, it could be clear, you know, what are the causes of all these tensions. I think the U.S. pursue the policies that is something I would call it perhaps international totalitarianism. <laughs> I have my mention, but anyway, this is that uh, I am the one that should control everything. You know, every country should just do what I want you to do. If not, I have this, I have that means to punish you. Well, what uh, irony is that the U.S. also promoting the so-called universal idea all over the world. You know, democracy, human rights, and you suppose you know you you you're supposed to be you know, of people by the people for the people let people decide. But when it comes to international relations, why you don't let the other country decide their own feet? I think it's a. I don't know, no, but anyway. When it comes to the United Nations, of course, I also agree with Muto that, uh, but the reality is, maybe the United Nations tried, right, but because it has uh, so many countries as members, to be kind of uh, neutral. But in, in, in a lot of cases, I found that actually it is very difficult and, uh, you know, the U.S. was, I don't know, I haven't checked. It's U.S. Uh, was never condemned by the United Nations resolution or anything. You know, it's only that, uh, you know, other countries, you know, being imposed uh, by the sanctions. But it is any, any time the U.S. is sanctioned by any other countries, you know, think about that. This this total world order is so unfair. You know, it's it's just whoever has the power and the rich and the powerful control. It applies to lots of countries, but so far I think this implies also in the international order that we have today. I think those are the problems we really have to face. 
Thank you.